Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I have something a little bit different. It's an American car for possibly the first time on the channel. This is a 2021 Chevy Equinox in LS trim, uh, which is kind of near the base, but it's pretty cool. We can check it out and see what's going on. I've uh, been fortunate enough to be able to borrow this vehicle for a little while and we'll have a look. So this is the third generation of Equinox, which I believe replaced the Trailblazer. And of course now the Trailblazer is back uh, which is just a little bit different size, but that's just uh, how they how they're doing things over there. I guess these days they have a, they're bringing back a lot of names. Uh, so anyway, again, being the LS, there's the uh, Premier and the LT above this, and there's also a base L trim below. But you'll notice some things on the um, you know on the vehicle here. Like for one, there's no chrome trim, uh, just a lot of you know plastic cladding on the outside. You do have, I believe, yeah, 17 inch alloy wheels. Um, you know, pretty decent styling for a, a crossover, which, I mean, they all kind of look the same. Each each one, I mean, they're all kind of doing the same thing these di these days. They really are. Uh, this is, I, I don't know, I don't know what there is to say. I guess this one looks decent. It's not hideous. I don't think anything about it is uh, revolting, nor is it particularly exciting or different. Uh, I guess, you know, the, you know, it does have nice looking headlamps, nice LED uh, lighting and then also the turn signals are now down kind of lower towards the bottom which a lot of vehicles are going towards now anyway so kind of interesting uh, starting on the outside you know again pretty basic in this trim but like I said pretty decent it does have keyless entry so if you have the key with you you just uh, press this button uh, and it will lock or unlock depending on what it is the interesting thing is that there's no rod so you kind of have to know you know you kind of have to know what position it's in or else pressing the button really won't get you anywhere uh, the fuel filler door is on the driver's side and that's all plastic kind of reminds me of like a Mercedes or BMW and I think I pointed this out in the last or one of my previous videos but it looks like there's a cutout here these did come with uh, or still do I should say still come with a diesel option all right and at the back here a couple things I found interesting with this so it does have a nice spoiler on the back you can see the antenna for OnStar and satellite radio um, you know, nothing too fancy. These did come with an automatic or electrically operated tailgate. This one does not. This one is manual. So you just reach up underneath and it will open up and you have to lift it up yourself. Uh, and you can see the blank. There's a, looks like a blank here and also one there for the automatic controls. You do have a pretty decent space back here with this, uh, you know, kind of rubbery cover, which is actually kind of light, you know, but decent space. These seats do fold down. You have some more storage down here below, and it looks like there's a spare tire uh, further down yet. Yes, there is. Well, it's all in good shape. Uh, this one only has 3,600 miles on it, so it's actually pretty neat and neat and tidy. Uh, one thing, look at the look how on the right hand side there's a lot more room than on the the other side. It's kind of interesting. I guess that's to incorporate the fuel filler, but kind of odd. You don't usually see that much asymmetry in a um, you know, in the trunk of a vehicle like this, there is a power outlet back here, and it looks like there's a, looks like there would be a, some type of cover for the cargo. Uh, let me make sure this is open again. No, it's not. Okay, go ahead and unlock everything. So these seats do fold 60/40, which you can do from right here, and they they um, they'll spring down with some action. But then <laughs> there's this cover that goes so across, which is all. You know, all set up for hauling stuff, and there is a latch system. But yeah, that's a very heavy seat to fold up and uh, back down. So before we look at anything else there, uh, oh, and there are some interesting tie downs on left and right here. Uh, to put the tailgate down just goes down, but before we do, if you look at this gap right along here, I'm not sure what's going on. I mean, every car is going to have a seam there of some type. Sometimes it's concealed with plastic, but wow, that's kind of a, I don't know, it looks like somebody it was doing some DIY job on it or whatnot, but that's just kind of interesting. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Other than that, there is a backup camera which we can look at later. Moving on to the interior, we'll start in the back. Uh, you know, I, I think GM is doing a better job these days with a lot of their stuff. Nothing inside is, is particularly exciting or new, but it isn't 10 or 15 or even 20 years out of, um, you know, out of, out of date. So, you know, pretty decent spacious rear seat it's just a uh, cloth interior which is fine it looks like on this car it's it looks like it's catching a lot of dirt there's a lot of like dog hair pet hair and stuff that's uh, getting caught on it I do I'm not a huge fan of leather I do like velour but cloth is 
I don't know, it can be kind of chintzy if it's not done right. You do have nice LED lights and uh, grab handles getting in back here. And just the window switches uh, on the door panels and then the pull, there is some nice storage. Uh, decent decent audio in this vehicle. You can see the speakers there, and then there's a few more speakers uh, in the front, which we'll get to. There is USB charging. You do have some climate vents back here, some decent pockets, although they're kind of you know kind of small. Uh, rubber floor mats. I guess that's just the way they have it set up right now. One thing with this, it feels like the door handles. Um, this one feels like plastic. I was going to say I think the driver's side one. Um, at least I haven't been on the passenger side, but I believe that one is metal well, maybe maybe not it, it, it could I could go either way on that hard to tell all right we'll look under the hood next so driving this vehicle we'll look at this more in the test drive but I was kind of surprised with the uh, performance but this is a 1.5 here this one actually this is the first GM vehicle that I think I've ever come across that has a, a rod to prop up the hood which is not easy when you're trying to film let me get that up but yeah no struts on this i don't know if that's weight savings or cost savings or what but that's kind of new so this is a um, this vehicle is powered by a 1.5 liter direct injected turbocharged four cylinder uh, this is front wheel drive and it's mated to a six speed automatic and uh, you know it's pretty smooth and surprisingly powerful other than that it does have you can see it, this one's powered by electric uh, steering so you can see the motor down there for that everything's in good shape up here um, you know, nothing too fancy or too noteworthy. Just a few observations that I'm making um, based on the color of the coolant, which you might be able to see a little bit better on this side. It looks like they may still be using Dex Cool, so that's kind of interesting. I know they had some problems with that. Uh, and this is, does have our 1234 refrigerant instead of the old style 134A. That's kind of cool. And uh, you can see there is the turbo, which is quite, quite small, but it's there. All right, I'll go ahead and put this back down best I can. I'll tell you what, I think I'm going to shut the camera off and we'll pick this up in a second. And with the hood closed, we can continue. Um, here's the key, by the way, so you just have lock, unlock, and panic. I believe these did come with uh, also an option for a remote start and then definitely a button for the power uh, tailgate if it was so equipped. This does have uh, power seats just for the driver's side, or just, I, I should say, this has a power seat. Uh, we'll go with that. It looks like it's 10-way adjustable, forward, backward. It is pretty decent there and it does actually do power recline and power lumbar so that's pretty cool uh, my one of my GM vehicles that I own personally just has I think it just adjusts the base that you have manual recline and definitely manual lumbar all your window controls are here on the side this is the lockout button uh, power mirrors everything there uh, decent speakers again it looks like a six speaker setup across the you know across the car here so with the key in my pocket this one does have remote start, so you just press the button. So you'll notice when this uh, starts up, there's the, here, I'll turn the fan down just a moment. Okay, so you'll notice that the light lights up green. The thing I find interesting is there's also an LED on this side, but that never lights up. I wonder what that's for. I didn't see anything in the owner's manual, but I didn't have time to read every, every little detail. Okay, starting at the top here, you do have uh, visors with a mirror, and look at these lights. Look how long it takes for these to come on. Check out the other side. I just thought this was weird. So it, they come on, and then they take a while to brighten. That's the weirdest thing. A lot of luxury vehicles will have kind of a similar setup like that, uh, but it'll actually be for the, you know, like the dome lights will come on slowly, which is considered kind of like a luxury feature or option, but I think of visors, or a, a mirror in the visor, I should say. I can't get that out. Uh, a mirror in the visor, you'd want those lights to come on pretty quickly. You wouldn't want to have to wait for that, so that's kind of odd. Otherwise, LED lights here. Um, you do have your OnStar controls here. This is not a self-dimming mirror, although that is an option. That's just manual. And you have your light controls um, up here. This piece right here, I thought, okay, that's where you put sunglasses or something. It is not. That is a blank. This vehicle does not have a sunroof, so the controls for that would be there, as well as um, the garage door opener buttons. I can't think of the uh, home link. Home link. That's what it is. All right, across the dash, everything does look pretty neat and tidy. This is this is a huge improvement for GM. I'm kind of used to the old like plastic wood and fake leather and vinyl and stuff, but this is this is a lot more in touch with the times. This is kind of an aluminum finish. It's definitely plastic, but it looks really good. Uh, nothing in here is cheesy or tacky. There's really no hard plastics. Even the stuff that looks 
that that is a hard plastic. It doesn't really look like it. This looks decent, just like the headliner. Uh, not too bad. Nice speakers across the dash. You have your vents. This would be uh, that's the sensor for the lights, which um, in this vehicle may not be optioned now that I'm looking at it. This little thing here, this will light up uh, something on the dash, kind of like a, a heads up display, but just to let you know that you're about to be in a collision. And an, if it's optioned properly, and that's the thing with GM stuff versus like a luxury car, you know, you can you can option these to death, but um, you know, base, you do, just don't see a lot of them with some of the features that you can get. So again, we'll come back to this many, many times, but if optioned, it will also vibrate the seat too, as well as give you this, uh, you know, flashing light and it will also apply the brakes if you're about to be in a collision. All right with the infotainment system here um, pretty clean you just you can turn this on and off there's shortcuts for the phone and then to go back to the home screen here uh, which you can do under audio it looks like just AM FM and if you hit more uh, you can do Bluetooth uh, no XM radio on this vehicle I don't even think they have all the presets set yet uh, you can go in here to tune manually and you can go in that way with that. Uh, I'm not going to go over everything here, but it does have a couple options. You can also connect a phone, which I'm not doing. Uh, you can get this car uh, set up as a Wi-Fi hotspot and then connect up to like five or six, maybe even seven devices. It does have uh, Android Auto and CarPlay in settings. It's pretty basic. Let's see if we can... Anyway, I like how time and date is at the at the um, you know the first one that's probably the one I'd use the most. Below that you have this car uh, as option again as optioned uh, with manual climate control. So it's just uh, one zone and you can select where the air comes out here. You have all your this basic stuff. This would also come with a dual automatic climate control. These would be like digital knobs. Uh, they also came with an option for heated or a, I should say heated and ventilated seats if you wanted. Uh, down below. If optioned, this would also be a wireless charger in addition to your aux and USB and a, um, the, what is that, USB 3.0? It's the latest generation of auxiliary anyway. Uh, the console here, just no, no, um, no leather, that's just kind of vinyl or some kind of soft material. You have this little tray up here and they actually give you a little light with this sort of fridge style, you know, switch to come on when you lift the lid open on that. Otherwise, nothing else interesting inside. Just some interesting sort of clips. I'm not sure what these are for, but they're there. In the console, you do have a nice little pocket here, decent cup holders. It does have an electronic parking brake, so I believe you just, uh, yeah, you pull up to lock it or to, you know, actuate it and then down to release. And, you know, they've given some nice attention to detail. Notice the nice aluminum trim here and even a little bit on the switch. So, you know, again, you have basic ones on the door, but, you know, they're, they're trying something. It, it looks all right. Uh, pretty basic shifter here, which I'm a fan of. So just go back to drive. We can, uh, the door's open right now. That's why it's beeping at me. You can go back to L down here and then shift uh, manually. And then you can see over here, you just have this uh, fiddly little switch on the top. So you can just, you know, drive where it'll be most of the time. Okay, next to the gauges, these are the base gauges. Uh, there would be, uh, again, if you optioned it, it would have a larger LCD display in the middle, but, you know, tachometer on the left, you have cruise control. This does have adaptive cruise control, which you can set. You can also set the distance that's done here, which we'll get to in a moment. Uh, fuel gauge and temperature gauge at the top. I've driven this car for, you know, a couple extended trips, and it seems like the, the needle never gets to the middle, which kind of reminds me of some older GM stuff that uh, that my family's had. Another thing I like with this is when you turn everything off, or here we'll do we'll turn everything off to demonstrate it. But when you turn everything back on, the gauges do self-test, which yeah, that's pretty cool. I think that's pretty neat. And then you do have these controls on this little uh, like dot matrix display here in the right in the center not a whole lot of options with them. You can scroll through each one here. So this is, uh, so again, you'll have your your compass and then the gear position on the bottom there. And I do have a door open right now. That's, I didn't, it didn't shut completely. So that's why that symbol's up. Otherwise you can scroll through uh, pretty simple stuff. If you go over to vehicle, this is just kind of uh, different settings and things. It's kind of like when they used to have like the four buttons on the left or the right of the 
of the um, climate control, uh, not climate control, the instrument cluster, it would kind of be the same thing, except now it's integrated into this. And if you go over to Eco, it just kind of shows you what your fuel economy's been. So it's been near 40, around 40 miles per gallon. That's pretty decent. Uh, again, this, yeah, all your, all your information that you'd need. The interesting thing is that there's really no good screen. Like you don't, a lot of these things you don't need to see all the time. I mean, speed, that's kind of redundant. Um, you know, you don't need a trip meter all the time. Fuel range, I guess that's the most practical one to leave up. We'll leave it with that. On the steering wheel, which controls all those features, you have some directional keys uh, here to the side. This will be for your phone and voice controls. Uh, decent steering wheel, by the way. It feels pretty soft to the touch. Again, they've tried. It's not too basic, and I have the feeling this one isn't going to be all crumbly in five, ten years or so of sitting in the sun. Uh, here's all your cruise control options. This does have lane keep assist. This one right here, believe it or not, you can get uh, like a heated steering wheel in this vehicle. So very cool. All your wiper controls are here on the right. On the left, you have your headlamp controls, and uh, yeah, that's about it. You have some additional lamp controls here. Here's here's one of the things I found comical about this. When you turn this on, I'll, I'll be quiet and you can listen. I'm not sure if you can hear that, but there's a real high-pitched click from the left rear. But then if you turn the uh, turn the high beams on, There's a very loud click from somewhere in the front of the vehicle, so kind of odd. Overall, this is a pretty quiet vehicle, so it's just really weird that you can hear the clicking of a relay. I mean, it's not that quiet, so if they put the relay inside, I don't know if you can hear it, but you can hear it even when you're driving, which is kind of funny. Other than that, everything's pretty basic inside. Uh, just give me a couple minutes, we'll get everything set up, and we can go for a drive. One last thing before we before we take off here on down the road. If you look through the manual, some of these... Um, some of these pictures are, of course, new. They have to be for the, um, you know, for the vehicle. They're, they can't show you the, a dashboard of like a, you know, some old car. But look at some of these cartoons, as I call them, in here. I mean, this is the same stuff that I think my dad's, uh, like, you know, Impala had, and probably is, you know, some GM product from the '80s before that. It's about time they redid some of this stuff. I mean, some of the vehicles in here haven't been manufactured for 30 or 40 years, and it's just kind of funny. I mean, what car? Like, look at this one here. What car is that? Is that like an 85 Caprice Classic? It's time they did some of these uh, fresh and, took <laughs> and and did a new take on this. I mean, at least come up with something from the 21st century. All right, so starting off here, uh, when we go into reverse, the backup camera does come on pretty quickly, and you do have pretty decent trajectory, so that's pretty cool. So I'm underway now with the Equinox, and I have to say, I'm kind of surprised. It's not that this vehicle is so impressive, but it's been a long time since I've driven a GM vehicle that wasn't, you know, that didn't feel outdated, and it's, you know, I never really get to drive new vehicles that often, so it's kind of cool to be able to have an experience like this. But anyway, like I said, it's not that bad. I was really surprised with this engine. I Getting into it, I didn't really know what was in it. I'd do the research later. I'd, I'd rather kind of try to figure out what it is. And at first I was thinking like, ah, oh, it's a four-cylinder, but it seems to rev pretty freely. And then I thought, you know, I wonder if this is that 1.5 turbo. And sure enough, it is. It's actually not that bad. And I have to say, it's rated at 170 horsepower, 203 pound-feet of torque. And it's not bad. It's, it's actually pretty surprising, especially paired with this six-speed automatic. It's very smooth. It's not super crisp, but I think uh, I think a vehicle like this is more befitting of something that is, like I said, smooth, and it's it's matched really well. The turbo revs pretty freely. It, it feels uh, feels nimble. It feels ready to go. It doesn't have a lot of lag, which it, it shouldn't with you know the way it's set up with uh, modern configurations and such. But it uh, it does drive quite nice and. One thing with some of these, some turbo vehicles, newer ones, and especially ones with like eight or nine or ten gears, they can be really, you know, peaky. Well, the turbos can be peaky, and then paired with a transmission that doesn't know what gear to be in, it can kind of be a nightmare. I mean, it might might drive okay, but you have to drop a couple gears, and the turbo takes a while to spool up. This this never seems to be caught flat-footed. It seems to be doing doing pretty good um, on back roads and up hills, down hills, and on the highway. So that's pretty impressive. 
Now, in my experience, it seems like the lane keep assist is a little bit touchy. Um, it did catch me a couple times when I was, you know, of course, trying to go over the line and uh, test it out, but then sometimes it won't. So if I drift over now where we have a little bit of a berm, we'll see what it does. So I'm, I'm halfway over and, you know, so it's not doing anything. So it seems like it works sometimes, sometimes not. That seems like it goes in and out. Apart from the engine and transmission, the rest of the drive is pretty decent. The seat is pretty comfortable. Everything that you have to touch and interface with uh, does in fact feel nice. Uh, one way that it does not feel very modern or European, which is what they're going for by the way, even though this car is made in Mexico, um, is the handling. It's very much GM. It, it sort of, uh, you know, it, it, when you turn the wheel, it, the vehicle dips. It doesn't go around the corner. And that's kind of the feeling that you get, which I was a little bit surprised at. My 2010 Impala does that. I wasn't really expecting that in a 2021 vehicle, but just the same, it is here. Otherwise, it is soft. It does seem to soak up bumps pretty well and do, does actually do a pretty decent job. There isn't a lot of like crashing or loud noises. It's, it's a very quiet suspension. Sometimes vehicles will hit a bump and you won't feel anything, but you can definitely hear it, and that is not the case in this vehicle. Otherwise, everything else is fairly decent. Uh, visibility is pretty good with the exception of the D-pillar. It's kind of wide and you do have a little bit of a blind spot there. Uh, kind of glad to have the backup camera as the belt line is rather high on this one, but um, otherwise, you know, not too bad. Like I said, everything's pretty comfortable, pretty easy to use. It doesn't take long to figure out how, how you know, how everything works and where everything is. And frankly, that's because there isn't a lot of features, but yeah, that's okay, that's fair. That, that definitely fills a segment of the market. Uh, braking is good. Everything else seems seems to be all right. I'm just kind of surprised at how quiet it is. It's really not super loud. You hear some road noise, but it's it's not bad. I could definitely uh, I definitely would have been understanding of much worse. And before I sum this up, I mean. I guess one of the typical things with American cars that everybody wants to talk about is that the quality is usually not great. Now GM makes some great engines. I don't know if this 1.5 or any of the other ones, there is an available 2 liter turbo with some more power that comes with a 9 speed. So there's a lot of different options out there, but I'm not really sure that this is going to be one that's going to be good for 200,000 miles without a ton of maintenance. And frankly, it's probably not. But as far as a new vehicle, there's no you know, huge issues with it. It does, like I said, it drives quite nice. It's not uh, unimpressive. In that regard but time will tell you know but as far as the power goes it does make I mean it does make about as much power as one of the older three and a half or 3.4 liter engines uh, did so it's it's not terrible in that regard but I just can't get over how decent this 1.5 liter engine is it really um, hasn't messed up it, it has nice power all throughout it's just super impressive but anyway, it's time to wrap this up. So my take on the 2021 Equinox, uh, actually it's a surprisingly decent vehicle. Um, as far as quality, we'll see, but not bad. It's, it's certainly a lot better than um, stuff I've driven in the past from GM. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, let me know what you think, and I'll see you with the next one.